Are transitional fossils evidence for evolution? Welcome to Critical Thinking Skin, where we look at how you can think about any faith-challenging message and arrive at a biblical, logical conclusion yourself. I'm Patricia Engler, and today let's begin part one of two videos on so-called transitional fossils, which supposedly represent animals in some intermediate stage of evolution, for example between dinosaurs and birds, between fish and land creatures, or between ape-like ancestors and humans. There are different examples of alleged transitional fossils. For instance, Tiktaalik supposedly represents a fish on its way to developing limbs, and Archaeopteryx supposedly represents an intermediate between dinosaurs and modern birds, although the details have been up for debate amongst evolutionists. You can find much more information on these and other fossils in the linked resources. Meanwhile, let's examine how to think through any transitional fossil claim more generally using the seven checks of critical thinking. First, check scripture. Genesis indicates God designed creatures to reproduce according to their kinds. So biblically, we would interpret a fossil as being halfway between two kinds. Saying that fossils represent an evolutionary process of death and suffering leading up to humans in particular challenges clear teachings from scripture, failing check to check the challenge. For check number three, check the source, you'll notice that any claim about transitional fossils can't come from a source which starts with God's word as its absolute authority because the word transitional already takes for granted that evolution between kinds is happening. On that note, for check number four, check the definitions, some researchers recommend using the term intermediate form instead because it doesn't imply the same evolutionary assumptions that transitional forms does but it's still worth clarifying what kind of intermediate we're talking about. I mean, does it look like something between two different kinds of creatures? Or was it found in rock layers between two kinds or both? Does its whole body look like an intermediate between two kinds? Or does it have one feature that looks like it belongs to another kind? Or does it have several features which look like intermediates between two kinds? Clarifying what seems to be intermediate will help you identify the observational science, which is check number six. But first comes check number five, check for propaganda. Messages that fossils like Tiktaalik and Archaeopteryx are transitional can sound convincing because they're repeated so often from multiple sources, whether museums or textbooks or even TV shows. But like episode 40 discussed, repetition cannot make a false message true. Neither can eloquence, popularity, or polished looking diagrams illustrating what artists think fossils' living counterparts looked like. Such diagrams often have evolutionary assumptions built right in. Recognizing those requires check six, check the interpretations. First ask, what's the observational science? What facts can we observe in the present? Well, in this case, the facts are the fossils themselves and the rocks they were found in. And interestingly, those rocks don't always give dates that match a straightforward evolutionary interpretation or scenario, even using evolutionary dating methods. But more on that next time. When it comes to fossils, observational science doesn't always have much to go on, especially if the skeletons aren't complete. Ideas about what missing bones might have looked like, how that affected animals' body plans, and what animals' soft tissue, eye color, skin color, or even hair distribution looked like are all interpretations from historical science. Presenting these interpretations as facts in textbooks and museums is just a type of propaganda to make evolution look more true by appealing to aesthetics rather than facts. Also, remember, we can't directly observe function from fossils. We don't know exactly how creatures use some of these now fossilized features when they were alive. For instance, coelacanth fossils have lobed fins that some people, using evolutionary assumptions, originally thought represented precursor limbs, until live coelacanths were observed using those same fins for swimming. What are some other historical science interpretations? Well, the very label transitional fossil and any story about the past that goes along with it is interpretation based on evolutionary assumptions rather than a definite fact. What are some of those assumptions? Generally, transitional fossil stories assume Earth is millions of years old and that evolution can change one kind of creature into another. These assumptions have serious issues you can learn about in the linked resources. So, what's an alternative explanation for intermediate looking fossils? We'll look into that more, examine how observational science compares, and continue with check seven next time. 
Meanwhile, for more on how to think critically about any face-challenging message, you can access my other CT Scan episodes packed with tactics, tips, and tools that helped me as a Christian student at Secular University. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, it's Patricia here. Just wanting to let you know that if you like these videos, a free, easy way to help Answers in Genesis Canada create more content and equip more people to defend their faith is to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, click the bell, and of course, share these resources. That lets the social media algorithms help these videos reach more people who can benefit from them, saving us advertising expenses while promoting biblical authority. Thank you so much.